uh, it's not very nice always to be the speaker in the after lunch session and I have a even more tough competition because something more interesting is happening elsewhere in the world. Those who know, will <laughs> know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'll try to keep you focused on this topic. Uh, so in this very interesting meeting, I uh, find that this particular topic of opinion dynamics has not yet been addressed too. And uh, this is what I'm going to talk on. And uh, the, basically, I'll talk about one model and how one can apply it to some recent social phenomena. So I have a young battalion who, without whom, I cannot do anything. So these are all young, either faculties or students or uh, postdocs or just submitted thesis in various kind of status. And uh, we have one, actually, interestingly, the model I'm going to talk about was published, uh, was uh, formulated and published in 2012. But the application part is much more recent. So I will be talking about this work, which is already published in some detail. And if I have time, then I will be talking about this. This is in a preliminary stage, so I can really stop at any moment. Okay, so opinion is a very qualitative statement. So what do I mean by opinion? Like I can read a book and I can form some opinion that I really like the book and so on. Or you can have opinion about some uh, event or say you can have an opinion that I am supporting this player or this team or so on. So the first type of opinion formation that is you have form some opinion, you review a movie and give a score say 7 out of 10 and so on. I am not going to address that kind of opinion, but rather opinion on a social scale and uh, about some particular events or as I told you uh, um, in the context of elections or uh, some uh, uh, matches and sports, etc. Okay. So uh, as I told you, the kind of problems I am going to address is that how society forms opinion on public issues. And essentially it is an evolving process. And you know what happens if you have uh, something to decide. So you usually call upon a meeting, and those who are uh, faculties, you, you know that in universities especially that uh, you have to <laughs> attend some team meetings and decide things. So there what happens, uh, some people have some opinion, the others will oppose and so on. There will be some fights, debates, arguments, etc. But usually, finally, you get some kind of a majority opinion. So you uh, people usually agree, OK, so this is the decision and so on. In par I'm not talking about things what happens in parliament. <laughs> OK, so when I say that there is a consensus reached, consensus is, of course, a macroscopic feature. but uh, now we ask the question that what happens at the microscopic level, what are the interactions taking place among the agents which ultimately lead to a consensus or its absence? Because sometimes it happens that you don't reach a consensus, then you call another meeting and so on. So uh, what we do is we uh, assign some values which define the states or the opinions of the agents and that changes in time through some interactions. And we, first of all, we have some rules, how uh, they are going to change. And another important thing is the topology. Okay. So the, ultimately, all these things will involve some parameters. And we, as we change the parameters, it may happen that depending on the value of those parameters, you can reach consensus or there may be no consensus. So uh, usually what one gets is that there may be a transition, as I tune a parameter, there may be a transition from a so-called ordered state and to a disordered state. Something which we uh, are very familiar with in, uh, in physics, and that's why physicists get interested in this particular problem. So this parameter which induces this so-called transition can be thought of as a noise. So as I told you, for the important thing to when I form, form a model is how do I quantify the opinions. So for this particular talk, I will be restricting uh, on uh, discrete opinions only. So it can be, say, suppose you have two options to decide, then I can assign the plus minus one values. If you have a third, you can include zero and so on. OK. So one interesting quantity is the average opinion. If it is very, uh, zero or very close to zero, that is, that corresponds to the disordered state. And if the average opinion is equal to one, that is perfect consensus, which is not actually 
which is very rare. So usually whenever this average quantity and we take the absolute value is non-zero, we say that it is an ordered state. Okay. So now I am coming to the model. You have already heard the kinetic exchange model in Oniban's talk. So uh, he was talking about some models in econophysics which involve this kind of exchanges. But there, uh, uh, in that, there are some differences in uh, the model I am going to talk on. Uh, in the econophysics models, you have conservation of money, etc. Here we don't have such things. What we have here is that two agents they come into contact, and we consider the change in the opinion of one agent, say ith agent. Uh, she uh, is interacting with the jth agent, and the change in the opinion takes place in this manner. So you see, this mu ij actually represents an interaction. In absence of this mu ij, that person is going to retain the original opinion. There will be no change. And what we do here is this mu ij, usually we take plus minus 1. It can be something else also. It has a distribution. But the important quantity is the fraction p of the interactions mu are taken to be negative. And this acts as a noise. And what happens is as we increase p, then we see that there is a critical uh, value of p above which there will be no order. And these things can be dealt uh, in a mean field manner in the sense that every agent uh, interacts with every other agent. But also one can consider a lattice on which you have only neighbors interacting. In that case also you have a transition and these cases have been well studied quite some time back. Quite some time back. So now we come to the application part. So the first problem I'm going to address is the US presidential elections. So you all know that uh, what happens in an US election, that uh, you have uh, two, two or more candidates from running for presidentship. And uh, then uh, on one scale, you have the global winner. So the number of votes, the maximum number of votes uh, obtained by one candidate is, uh, can be called the popular winner. On the other hand, like last time you remember that in 2016, these were the two candidates, main candidates. And then it is not on the basis of popular votes the president is decided. Yes, you have a question? Yeah, but what happens before an election is that before an election, you start forming your own opinion. Like I may uh, support someone, but then I uh, start a discussion with you. You support a different candidate, and it may happen that you convince me that your candidate is actually better, and then I change my opinion. That's what I'm saying. Because before the election, it is a dynamical process. So, so there are some, otherwise, why should there be any election campaign? They all try to influence you and change your opinion. So it is not that I am rigid. Consensus means. Here, consensus means yes, majority wins. That's the consensus. A consensus has to emerge. Somebody has to be a winner. Yeah, there, there are some, some debates of, uh, on, on this word also, as I told you. Loosely, loosely speaking, in my talk, consensus means that there is one emergent winner. It's not a completely disordered case. Like, if I, there are two candidates who get equal number of votes, then that is not a consensus. OK? So please accept this for the time being. We can continue this argument later on. OK, so what happened that uh, it is not on the basis of the popular votes. The president is ultimately decided. And you know what is the basic scheme. So with, this, uh, with the help of this picture, I can just tell you what happens. And you all know that uh, this is the popular vote. But then what happens that if you are a winner in one particular state, then all the seats go into your favor. So ultimately, this electoral college system may lead to a scenario where the popular winner doesn't become the uh, president. OK, so this is what happened in 2016. And we got interested to know that can we explain, using some statistical physics models or methods, to, uh, can we explain how this takes place? Because this kind of thing happened in 2016, but it also happened three more times in the past. So what we now realize that this particular scheme, which I to told you about, is very similar to a procedure called coarse graining, which is often used in physics. So this is an example. So we have generated just two 
types of opinion which are represented by these two colors. So you scatter these things here. In this case, you see that there are more yellow points than blue points. But when I do this coarse graining, which means that I take each small square, and if there are more blue points there, I just re uh, replace it by a blue box. This is uh, uh, just simulating the electoral college process. It is, of course, more complicated, but simple picture can be like this. So essentially what happens that when the popular candidate loses, which happened in 2016, it, uh, uh, it is one example that the coarse grained order is of opposite sign to the original order. So we conjecture that such cases the system is actually described by a model, which it should be described by a model which has critical behavior. I'm explaining the statement. So the society is nearly disordered. What happens is that this kind of scenario can only happen when the number of votes obtained by the two candidates are very close. Otherwise, it cannot happen. So that means it is almost disordered. So that's why we claim that it has to be a scenario in which you have this guy. It is very close to a critical behavior. So what we did, uh, OK, before what we did, we tried to identify the important quantities. First quantity is delta, the winning margin, and the second is the voting population n new. And then we uh, found out from the real data that this kind of uh, uh, behavior happens. So all these uh, blue points, they are actually representing those cases in which the popular winner was also the uh, final winner. But these four points represent those cases in which you had the opposite happening. So you can see that we found that these points very roughly follow a linear behavior, whereas these points will follow a sublinear behavior. Ultimately, we'll see that this scaling behavior emerges to be the important issue. How? So first, let us take a completely random case. So you randomly assign two types of opinion on a, it doesn't matter whether it's on a lattice or not, because you're doing it randomly. And then you do a coarse graining. So if you do that, then uh, let those, uh, let us uh, call those, uh, we can uh, call those pins also in physics terminology. So we have sigma equal to plus minus one assigned to the uh, agents. And this delta represents the order or the margin because they are plus minus one. And uh, we also take the, we take these blocks over which this coarse grading is to be done. And they can have uh, random sizes. This is following the, uh, thing, the, the electoral college scheme. And then we generate configurations with fixed lambda, uh, sorry, fixed delta. And then we find out what is delta is the coarse grained order. And if delta into delta is, is less than zero, then that is one instance of the popular candidate losing. So ultimately, this quantity w is computed as a function of delta and n nu. And then we found that if we do a scaling like this, if delta is scaled by n nu to the power alpha, where alpha is equal to half, then we get a collapse of the data. These are two different sets of data. One is for exponential distribution of bits, and the other one is for power law. And then we compute all these, and we compute the corresponding quantities from the real data. Then we find that those real data fall in this region where w is equal to 0. So from this, we conclude that the random assi assignment is not a possible explanation, which is almost obvious because votes are not uh, cast randomly. So next, we took uh, our model, but then we also followed this weighted coarse graining scheme following the electoral college uh, scheme in, uh, followed in the US. And there we also again took the uh, distrib size distribution, which is followed there roughly and found out to be exponential and use that in our simulation. So actually we did two, uh, we used two models. One is the simple Ising model with two variables. Other one is the kinetic exchange model with three variables. And uh, this is the kinetic exchange model result. And you can see we get a nice data collapse. But now this uh, quantity alpha is no longer equal to half, but it is around 0 0.7. Same is for the Ising model, but the collapse is not so good here. So we uh, rely more on this data and uh, this model. And now you see where are those four points. Now you can see that those four points lie here. So the 2016 data is here, where w is almost equal to 0. 
but the other three data can be explained using this data because you have a finite probability that this value of delta and this value of n nu can actually explain uh, uh, the can actually support the thing that uh, popular candidate can ultimately lose using this particular model. So as I told you that 2016 was a surprise. Okay, so basic conclusions is that as I told you that the scaling behavior emerges to be the important issue and let me give you the detail. Below the transition point, we found that there is a linear behavior. This explains the cases when delta is quite large. It is far from the critical point and much above the transition point, the result is similar to the random case. This is also expected. But very close and above the critical point, the different scaling is found. And this alpha, as I told you, turns out to be around 0 0.7. So it's a new kind of scaling. And let me also tell you that this alpha value was almost independent of the two models which we chose, which is around 0 0.7. Another important issue is if we now try to predict that in, uh, that, uh, in future, do we expect this kind of thing to happen? So what we need to do now is find out the total W and for whatever value of delta we have, so we integrate out this quantity and then we find for the Ising and the kinetic exchange model this kind of a behavior. So this jump is near the critical point, you can see. And here you have a kind of a step function behavior approaching as we go to larger and larger values of n. And then if you uh, calculate kind of the average around this critical point, then you can predict that what will be the value of the total expected uh, instances of this kind of uh, outcome. So this average turns out to be 15% from the Ising model and about 10% from the kinetic exchange model. But the present value is 7% as is four instances out of all the US elections, etc. So our model predicts that there will be more such cases in future. So that completes the first part. So I think I have some time for the second part also. Two minutes. OK, not a problem. So let me also address some open problems. One can be that you can study the same on networks. And perhaps that can explain how Trump won, if it can. And we also considered the fully connected model, but that cannot explain. It is something like the random case. So this is one ongoing work. It is a continuation of that US work uh, election also that here we are interested in, to, uh, in, uh, in uh, this uh, uh, probability when the number of states can be a variable. There are around 51 states in USA. So we wanted to see that if we reduce that number or increase that number, is this probability affected? And for this particular case, what we did, we did not consider a model, but we generated some correlated uh, configurations. And this correlation length was a variable here. And so uh, now we have just a two variable problem. So we have domains of ones and zeros representing the two opinions. And we do a one time course graining. And then we study this probability that the minor, uh, minor the uh, popular candidate loses. And this is done as a function of the state size. So it is in, uh, inversely proportional to the number of states. Now there are two trivial cases. Suppose there were only one state. Okay, then trivially the popular candidate will always be the global winner. On the other hand, if you assign one state to each person in the whole society, that means in the lattice language, one state to each site, then also the popular candidate will always be the global winner. So what is happening in between? There must be something happening because we already found that there is a non-zero probability. So when we studied that, this is also a preliminary result. So this is for the random case. You see then the random case, so this is the state size which is inversely proportional to the number of states. So it almost shows a plateau-like behavior. Then we had uh, two different correlation lengths. So one was 10 and one was 20 on a 330 by 330 lattice. And they more or less follow the same pattern. So this blue, uh, green and this blue, this these two are uh, correspond, these two correspond to 10 and 20. So if correlation length is larger, that means it is closer to the critical point. And then we uh, use some uh, non-trivial weight factor and that increases the probability, but it is not much. Otherwise, the qualitative behavior is same. So as I told you, this is ongoing work and we need to actually now uh, simulate the model and find out what is happening. Okay. Okay, so the other application in the, is in the Brexit data analysis. You all know about Brexit, so I don't need to go through that one more minute, please. So we have three kinds of population. One, 
uh, uh, part they want to leave, one part wants to remain, and one part is neutral. So these are the behavior of the three. Time zero is some uh, some day in 2012, and this is the date where the referendum actually took place. Okay. So we what we did was we took the difference between L and R and found out how many times it will cross zero. Crossing zero means that the verdict will be opposite. Okay. So how often does this verdict change? Okay. And then we found out what, we, and uh, th there will be some time intervals, and we wanted to find out the distribution of these time intervals. So because the data points are few in number, we looked at the rank plot, and it gives a law law variation with uh, an exponent 0.6, from where one can guess that the distribution exponent will be 1.6. So once again, we used the kinetic exchange model. And there we found that there are some configurations which do not reach equilibrium very fast. They are stuck into some metastable states. And for those, we also find such an oscillatory behavior if you plot R minus L. And that distribution uh, varies as, uh, as a power law again with an exponent 1.5, which is pretty close to what we got, get from the real data. And this is another representation of the time series once again. Where what we do is here is the convention is if we, the particular opinion is increased, we assign plus one. Well, it is like a walker who is going to the right, otherwise to the left. And then this is the picture we get. And from here, we compute the probability of direction change, how often you change direction. And Nikita, see how people change direction. So once you're a Trump supporter, tomorrow you are a Clinton supporter, and so on. Uh, anyway, so this shows the tendency of anti-persistence because you see that the, this probability is greater than point and cannot be explained from a biased random walk or a simple random walk picture. So this is very interesting we found because this kind of anti-persistence we also found from an econophysics model, the, again a kinetic exchange model, the CCA model. This is real data. But when we did the CCM model, we found this tendency of anti-persistence. but in the actual stock market prices, we tried to obtain that, but that was uh, not done in great detail. So to the best of my knowledge, we did not find it from the real data. But this is one real data which is showing it. I don't know the explanation right now. And let me just, uh, I have just written what other things we do, but we don't, I don't have any time. So thank you for your kind attention.